Hello everybody, my name is Tamuruj Lal and in 2025, which is going to start in a few days, I'm going to be completing over 23 years in cyber security, which is like mind boggling for me. Now, one thing I would love to do is go back in time and tell my younger self from like 15 or 20 years ago about certain things, some advice I would like to give my younger self to avoid the mistakes that I made. Unfortunately, I cannot do that. They haven't invented time travel, <laughs> unfortunately. But what I can do is help the next generation of cybersecurity professionals and give them some advice and hopefully they can avoid some of the mistakes that I made. So if you are in your 20s or your 30s in cybersecurity, then definitely this is a video you want to watch till the end to get benefit of some good old fashioned career advice. So uh, let's get started. Okay, so now the first advice I would like to give people is to make, make them understand that certifications does not equal career growth. This is a mistake I see young people make continuously again and again. For them, they think that to grow in the career, they need to get certified and keep on getting certified again and again. For them, like literally every year, the, the goal they have is to get a new certification. And that is a major mistake, right? Uh, I, do not become a certification factory in cybersecurity, which is that you do one cert, then you do another cert, and then you do other cert. And you think by doing this, somehow you're going to land a high paying job. It That does not work anymore. I can give you a background about myself. In 2005, I did the CISSP and I was getting job offers literally one week after getting certified. Why? Because the market was there, right? And there was a shortage of cybersecurity professionals who were certified. That market does not exist now. It's become very saturated. I'm not saying that certifications are not good. Of course, you need to get certified, but do not think that getting certified certified is enough. You need to have skills. You need to have that, like uh, make sure that you have hands-on skills, which employers are looking for. And then you work towards it. So do certifications, but balance them with proper real world practical skills. And how do you get the skills? Well, that brings me to my next point, which is always have a career plan. Please do not make your career plan that I'm going to do this. Like, uh, like I said, just make it about certifications. You need to have a proper tactical roadmap for the next 12 to 18 months and that you're working towards. M most people, what they do is they plan to like, the, this is what their plan is for the whole year. They're going to, they're going to keep working and they said, I'll probably get promoted or I'll probably got a salary raise or an increment or a promotion. That's pretty much, that's their career goal, right? And if they don't get it, they get very demotivated. Why? Because they had like booked everything on that only. They, they, their target was that only. They did not have a proper career plan. So what you need to do is have a proper roadmap for the things you have to do. How do you get that? Very easy. Uh, think about what your dream job is. Is it like the head of cloud security, a CISO, a head of uh, application security, platform architecture, whatever. Find that job on LinkedIn and note down the skills which they are looking for and then do a gap assessment. Where are you falling short? What skills do you do not have? Right? What experience do you do not have? Maybe what certifications you don't have? What tools do you know not know about? And then use that to create a proper roadmap, a learning plan for the next 12 to 18 months. And that will give you a North Star, a guiding light where you have to focus your efforts on. This is much, much better then just do certification A, then certification B, then certification C. Now, this will give you a proper roadmap. This is a mistake I make and I still see people making it even after so many years and they waste so much time and money and effort and it really doesn't lead to anything. Uh, number three, the third lesson I would give is incidents should always happen. Please understand this. Cybersecurity incidents are a way of life if you are in this industry. No matter how many tools you put in, no matter how many billion dollar solutions you have implemented, powered by AI, powered by machine learning, all those sort of things, this still means that incidents will still happen no matter what you do. What, But what you can do is learn from them, like make a proper root cause, implement the learnings and then make sure that that does not happen again. Playing the blame game, blaming others, blaming, you know, pointing fingers, and getting all historical is not going to help at all. all. Keep that in mind. You can you can minimize the chances of those incidents happening, but incidents will always happen. It is the nature of the industry. I'm not sure. I'm not saying you should take it casually, but just realize this and then change your mindset towards those incidents. And do not think that you are a failure because an incident happened. Learn from them and move ahead. 
Okay, number four is ignoring industry buzzwords. Now, cybersecurity has a buzzword problem, whereas that every few years there's a new buzzword that comes around like uh, zero trust or uh, generative AI security. You know, uh, 20 years ago, it was like web application firewall. Everybody was going crazy about web application firewalls, right? So please do not get caught up in these industry buzzwords. Do not buy products, do not get certified or do not take a training just because it, it, it's like the in thing to do or everybody else is doing it. It's called the shiny product syndrome. A lot of times vendors are deliberately propagating these words because they want to make you buy their solutions. Do a proper risk assessment of your environment so that you see what are the gaps and then fill, on, fill in those gaps like based on the right solution and, the, and a proper risk assessment. Do not buy stuff, do not implement stuff just because it is the in thing in the industry, just because you saw a Gartner report or just because some vendor showed you a shiny presentation. Do not get caught up in these industry buzzwords. Whatever you implement, whatever you do, make sure it is always backed up by a proper risk assessment. Number five is you have to market yourself. Now, all of us have been in this position where what happens is we we feel that we are the most qualified for a job or a promotion and then we see somebody who is not as qualified as us not as good as us get that job or get that promotion why is that because they were better at marketing themselves nobody is going to do your marketing for you you need to build those skills if you are not good at public speaking or writing or communicating then instead of doing the next cyber security certification actually focus on getting that skill Nobody is going to do it for you. I can assure you, and this is a skill that this is a long-term investment. This will help you throughout your career. Learn to be assertive and like communicate what you want to do, how to like make sure that your people are hearing you, how to get good at public speaking. Nobody else is going to do it for you. Nobody is going to magically suddenly find out how good you are. You have to do it yourself. Number six, uh, people may not like me saying this, but again, uh, one advice I would give is do not stay in one job too long. By this, I do not mean that if you are happy, then put in your resignation. No, but a lot of times people are not happy in their jobs and they still stay because they are afraid of maybe the next job will be even worse, right? If you stay in one job too long and you do not properly grow, the market will pass you by. And this is, I've seen this happen many times, right? I've, it's happened to me. It's happened to literally every person I know where they stay in one job too long and the people who are joining, they, they are earning more than them, even though they are not as qualified or as experienced as them. Why? Because the market has passed them by. They stayed in one job too long and the salary jump or the skill jump they would have gotten by changing jobs, that did not happen because they stayed in that same job. So if you're not happy in your job, if you're not like getting the recognition, maybe look at, do not be afraid of changing jobs. The worst thing that will happen is it might not work out right? But the learning and everything you will get is much, much more. There's always a risk. There's a risk of staying in your job. There is a risk of staying outside your job. But if you're not happy, if the work culture is not good, do not be afraid to make that leap. Okay, number seven is uh, do not work long hours. Again, again cyber security has a long hours problem wherein people work like very long hours because they think it's normal. They think this is like uh, you have to work this. I do not agree with this one bit. Okay. Uh, if God forbid you have layoffs in your uh, company, HR is not going to say that, okay, Tamur was leaving late every day. We will not fire him. That is not even a consideration they take into. Only your family and your own personal health will suffer if you continuously work long hours. I'm not saying that if you have incidents or some issue or deadline is there, you shouldn't work late. Of course, you then it becomes like a necessity, right? I'm saying this working long as a habit. And thinking this is normal in cyber security is absolutely not normal. Only your health will suffer and in the long term you will regret it. So please do not make this uh, like a habit. If your boss or your job is making this a necessity, then really this is not a good environment for you to be in. You should look at another job. Okay, number eight is very, very important, which is building your brand outside your job. And I cannot stress this enough. The way inflation is happening the way the job market is saturated night now, this, this is the best time to start building your brand outside your job. If the only people who know you are the people within your company, this is not a good place to be in. Build your brand outside your job, your own personal brand. If you're good at writing, write on LinkedIn or start a newsletter on Substack. If you're good at teaching, teach on YouTube, teach on TikTok, teach on Instagram, teach on Udemy, right? Whatever, just, just start building a brand outside your job. There has never been a better time of doing this. And the best thing about being building a brand is this brand goes with you wherever you go. 
Whereas your job goes away the second you leave it, right? All that title and everything goes away. Your brand will always be with you. And you can uh, not only build a brand which will help you to land better jobs, you can even make a lot of money if it takes off, right? I've known, I've known people who have built like full-time jobs and companies outside of the side hustle. And look at this, try to like build your own brand and do not just uh, focus on your job as your primary identity, build your own brand so that that stays with you. I've started a newsletter actually on this, a cybersecurity solopreneur in which I talk about side hustles and everything. I'm going to link it in the comment section. So check that out. It's 100% free. You don't have to pay me anything, but it, it contains a lot of the things which I've done. Number nine is embracing, changing and adapting. Now, cybersecurity is a constantly changing industry. Okay, nowadays, everybody is going crazy over generative AI. You can complain about it all you want, but that will not change the fact that AI is here. It's going to change everything. Today, it's AI. Tomorrow, it's going to be quantum computing security, right? 20 years ago, it was application security. Uh, like seven, eight years ago, for me, it was cloud security. I was cloud computing. I was pushing back against it because I did not want to change. I did not want to accept the fact that critical workloads could be run in the cloud with the same level of security because I was resisting change and that caused me a lot of problem. So please have this mindset. Okay, new things area. Maybe it's a new way of doing things. Do not be the guy who says no all the time because then the company is going to look at you as someone who is like stopping change, right? Be the guy who says yes, but with XYZ controls. And that will help you a lot in your career. Business will look at you as a person who is helping them, not the guy who stands at the end and says, no, you can't do this, you can't do that. And then number 10, the last advice I would give is uh, becoming the CISO is not always the end goal. A lot of people I've seen, they, they've been in the career for like seven, eight years and they're kind of depressed because they did not become the CISO. Uh, and they, because they think the CISO is the, like the metric for success. Unless you become a CISO, you're not successful. That is complete bogus. You can be perfectly happy and successful without becoming a CISO. I became a CISO like seven, eight years ago. I was absolutely miserable because I was all I was doing was making PowerPoint presentations and uh, responding to emails and making budget sheets. I'm much more happier doing technical stuff. And I then realized that maybe this is not for me. And you can be, you can earn the salary of a CISO very easily if you specialize, right? So do not think that you have to become the CISO always. I, I know people who are freelance cyber security consultants and they're earning as much as CISOs. So do not think that this is always the end goal. Uh, look at it from yourself, what sort of job you like, what sort of things you like to do, and then focus on that. This will make you much more happy in the long run, uh, believe me. So do not think that the CISO is the be all and the end all of everything. So yeah, that wraps up all the advice I have to give. I hope this level helps you out and I hope 2025 is an awesome year for you. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video.